show of hands, how many of you have computers? <laughs> Good, just checking. How many of you have scanners? Okay, now, how many of those scanners are flatbed scanners? Okay, and how many of you have digital cameras? Now, how many of you have fancy digital cameras like this? Okay, all right, good. How many of you have Photoshop or Photoshop Elements? Raise your hand. All right. And how many of you have Paint Shop Pro? Okay, good. And how many, how many of you have used anything free like GIMP? Okay, got some GIMP users. Okay, great, great. Just want to get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Obviously, you all are very advanced. Yeah. <laughs> we just haven't turned anything on. Yet. You haven't turned anything on like me, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, documents. We all have something. We have land deeds, we have marriage certificates, maps, articles from books, magazines. All these things eventually will be or should be digitized, should be scanned in a in digital format. However, many of these things have some damage, and sometimes when you scan them, uh, you notice things that don't show up in the original. You may have patterns, you, have, you may have what's called moiré, you may have uh, uh, strange color shifts. These kinds of things you're going to have to deal with when you're restoring the documents. Sometimes you'll have faded text. And that could be from handwriting, or that could just be from the print fading out. There's a, a few things that we can do uh, to get the uh, document into our computer and to do it in a way where we won't have a lot of extra work. Now, the first and most simplest thing to do to use is a uh, scanner. And I did bring one right here. And this is what we call a flatbed scanner. You can also photograph your originals with a digital camera. This can come in handy, especially with oversized. And of course, there's plenty of documents on the internet that you may use uh, for your research. And we'll start with the scanner. Some advantages and disadvantages I want to discuss with you. The first advantage is it's fast. With a scanner, typically it's fast if you, know how, if you know what you're doing with the scanner. And you get lots of detail, especially if you make sure you have a high quality scanner and you're scanning at a high resolution. Now when I say a high resolution, the, the magic number for high resolution is, anybody know? 300. Some say 600. But I'm, I, I say, look, 300, if you can get 300, you're off to a great start. You're, you're, you'll be fine. You want to go to 600 and higher, that's fine too. Um, but you will get all the detail that you need that's there with at least 300. But the scanner still has to be high quality. Disadvantages. We have oversized documents. We also have the scanner detail, and the operator. How are you using your scanner, okay? Are you using it properly? Maybe not. That can make it difficult. If you have a document that has details that aren't ink-based details, it's gonna be real hard to get with a scanner. What do I mean by that? Well, you'll notice that some papers may have a watermark or they may have they may be embossed you know where they punch through it and it gives it a nice detail maybe a rosette maybe a seal your scanner is not really going to do that very well and it's obvious i have a uh i worked on a wedding certificate once and it had paint with you know gold reflective paint the scanner didn't translate that very well it kind of looked black or grayish. These kinds of things you're not going to get with the scanner. Um, but 
that's where the next step comes in with your camera. Okay, so with the camera, you can get those documents that of course are oversized, and when I mean oversized, I mean larger than your scanner flatbed, which is typically a, a legal size or a letter size in dimension, eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 14. And it's also really good when you are at a location where you can't take the original. Uh, maybe there is an ancestor or something you want to get a picture of at a museum, you're not going to be able to take it off of the wall. Okay, so that's where this comes in, all right? That's where that camera comes in. A um, couple tips on that I want to I wanna jump into after we, we uh, go through the disadvantages. A cheap camera will not work. And what I mean by that is, sure, it'll work as in you can get exposures, but it is not necessarily going to give you the detail that you want. And cheap, I mean cheap, okay? You really want to spend some money on a camera if you want to get good detail with it. And you should be able to put it on a tripod, okay? It should have a little hole where you can put it on a tripod where it can hold still. Now, if you, can't, if you don't have a tripod or you can't connect a tripod, you can always do things like lean against a wall or put it on top of something or tell your friend, uh, <coughs> Here, come here, you know, and lean on them. Hopefully uh, they aren't breathing too heavy. <laughs> Some other disadvantages come in with, again, kind of skill. Understanding light. Understanding glare, reflections. How do you counter that with a camera? Now from the internet, getting your documents from the internet, you have, it's easy, and other people can help you out with that. If you contact whatever agency, I want this document, it can be made available. Some disadvantages of that is sometimes they can be low resolution. And if you want detail, if you want it to look really good, or you want to zoom in on something, you may not be able to get that. It may not be reliable. And they may tell you, well, this is all I have. And there's also a potential for forgery. So when, when documents are on the internet, you do have to be careful. You know, I often see images that have been sloppily enhanced or retouched, and uh, most people don't notice it. You know, I've seen them in books and whatnot, and it's just a, it's just something you gotta be wary of when you get your documents off the internet. So, quick things, quick, quick few things about this digital camera. When you are uh, uh, making copies. The, and if you want to see how your camera sees everything in a situation, all you have to do is squint your eyes. And if everybody with me kind of squint your eyes a little bit, just like I am, well, you can just see, and you'll notice you can see the bright areas, right? You can see the screen, you can maybe see this shirt here, right? But everything else is gone. Well, that's how your camera sees it. So if you can get a better lighting situation than that, you'll be set. The ideal lighting situation, if you've got to do a copy shot of your documents or your photos, is to take it in an overcast lighting situation. So where there's clear skies and the shadows all over the place, that's not ideal because the lighting is very harsh and there will be lots of glares. But if it's a cloudy day, partly cloudy day, that is perfect lighting to do your copy shots because there's no shadows. And if you have to photograph something that's in a frame, you won't get the shadow from the frame in the picture as well. Um, glares on the glass is obvious. Get out on a clear, sunny day, you're going to have probably some sunlight glaring into the glass. Uh, the tripod factor. Now, pretty much the bigger the tripod, the more expensive the tripod, the heavier it is and the more solid it will be. Okay? Um, what I do, and it really doesn't matter, as long as your camera is not moving when the exposure is made, 
we take, um, let's say, we have our, I'm going to take this map, and it's in a plastic bag here. I don't know if it's an archival quality bag, but that's okay. So here it is on the floor. This is the document I want to do a copy shot of. I need to get my tripod, which I is, has my video camera on it right now, actually. You know, and I put this strap around my neck, and it's on the tripod. And I'm going to shoot an overall. And what I mean by overall, I'm going to fill the frame in the camera and shoot. And shoot again. And if I can override the automatic focus and automatic exposure, I want to play with that too. I want to give it a little underexposed and a little overexposed. Those of you who have photography experience know that that is called bracketing. All right, but with a lot of automatic cameras, not automatic settings, really it does a pretty good job. But I always like to get a little over and a little under. Now, how many of you have cameras that shoot raw? Oh, great, great. Well, you don't need to bracket then. Have your exposure close. Have it close. But raw is really nice. Raw is a really great format. So after you shoot the overall, get in close. You might have to put on the macro setting and get some close shots of the details. If there's faces, this is critical. Because when you shoot your overall, even if it's on the wall, even if it was on the wall, and I shot the overall, here's a, here's a picture of Abraham Lincoln. We're in Springfield. So here's a picture of Abraham Lincoln. And I'm going to shoot it overall. And then I want to get in to the face and get a close up. Now, if it's on the wall and it's high, you're going to have distortion because of the plane is, is uneven. So what will happen is, if, if, if the detail that I want is up here, and I can't get a ladder to get up there to get a straight on shot, or I can't get in the balcony, or I can't stand on my friend's shoulders, um, I'm going to have some distortion. So that is, the face is going to be a little longer at the bottom than on the top. But with Photoshop or any photo editing program, that's fine. You can, you can fix that. Even if you don't know how to do it now, at least what I'm trying to do is give you the information you need to get all the details. And if you do it yourself, you'll have lots of information to work with. OK. Any questions about that, specifically about, yes, sir? Yeah, one question. I've, I've heard in some cases on some of the older documents yes. that taking a photograph in visible light doesn't always get some of the detail and that sometimes they use infrared photography to oh. bring out some of that detail. You, you know, I've, I've never done infrared photography. Um, and can the, 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 the infrared give you details that the non-infrared, wow, I don't know. I mean, I've seen the infrared and it doesn't look any better. I'll tell you this much. If you want detail, you got to go with high quality, no matter what. The type of film, the type of exposure, uh, not exposure, the type of film, the, the uh, uh, I don't know if that, you know, if you are going to shoot film, of course, you should go with a slower speed film. Well, all I'm saying is that there are some digital cameras out there that will do infrared. Ah, the digital cameras that do infrared. I don't, I don't know. Try it. I say try it, but I don't know. I think the best way to do it, though, the best digital camera format is RAW. <laughs> so if you can do RAW, you're set. Yes, sir? Uh, what about curve, like you're taking a picture, taking a, a picture of a picture that has curved glass? Oh, the, the images with glass. curved glass. And they're in the oval-shaped frames, usually. Or some other shape. You know, yeah, like yeah. Um, well, see, that's a case with lighting. So let's say it's out, let's say you can take it off the wall and you can photograph it in a overcast area, maybe even a somewhat shady spot. 
Um, but as long as there's not light coming through the shade, like in a tree, in trees or something, you can probably do that without the glare. The other alternative, and some of you with photography experience may know this, is if it is on the wall, or you, or you have to shoot it indoors with artificial lighting, the ideal situation would be to get two strobes, two flash. Maybe one is corded and then the other has a slave, what they call, a slave unit. And they'll be off to the sides like this. So the frame is here, your, your lights are here, and shoot. Diffuse it, if you can bounce them with a white card behind it or an umbrella, ah, oh, it'd be perfect. If you can't do any of that, and you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's in my house. <laughs> I don't have any of this stuff. Oh, you do. So what I would say, if you can get two lamps and set them off to the side, there you go. and make sure there's no reflection in there, but they'll be lighting. There might be a little something right along the frame edge because of the curved glass. But I tell you, typically though, most of these oval frames, the glass is broken and, you know. Uh, but typically, uh, the, the paper, the print is still bowed. And what I find is a lot of people give me these to work on and it's torn right in the middle because it's bowed and they pressed it down. So of course, I scan it while it's like that because it's like, well, you already tore it, so, you know. But that's another way, you know, you can take, if you can take it out of the glass, you know, that would be best. So, you know, always ask, hey, can I take it out? And of course, if it's a museum or something, they'll say, no, are you crazy? <laughs> um, so, uh, so let's get started on some work. <coughs> All right. Now, I have here a, uh, a, 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 a standard certificate of death. It sounds really it's like a death certificate, all right? But no, it's a standard certificate of death. So I want to uh, scan this. This is a copy that I got. This is the best quality copy that I got. Whose is this again? Yeah, yeah. This is the best one that, that you could get. You can't do any better than this, okay? This basically is what we would call a Xerox copy. No detail. Now on my scanner, I will place it. I don't know if you can see this, but you know, I just I won't necessarily place my documents right on the edge. I'll place them a little off the edge. And uh, if they're crooked, I can fix them later. But I always like to make sure I'm not cropping out details. Now on my scanner, I have, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm using an Epson brand scanner. And Epson, by the way, scanner is warming up. Epson, by the way, is, uh, I highly recommend them uh, for their flatbed scanners. Uh, second in line would be HP. And that's a far second. Um, I use an HP for my business, you know, for business work, but I am not satisfied with their, um, what you call it, driver, the scanner driver, how your computer interacts with the scanner, which is what you're seeing here. I think Epson's built-in software is really nice. Um, I do not do any, I do minimal photo editing or minimal editing in the scanner software. Okay, and uh, it's taken a little too long. Yeah, it hasn't done this before. I think it crashed on me. Give me a second. I am. I am going to uh, force quit that and then unplug. I. I don't like what happened. Sometimes you know when your when your scanner is not working, you know, you just unplug it <laughs> completely. <laughs> unplug the uh, power and the USB cable or Firewire cable. Anybody using SCSI? Okay. I don't know if anyone ever used the SCSI interface. Boy, that was tough. SCSI. 
Yeah, it was scuzzy. <laughs> okay, so let's see if it doesn't give me a... I guess it was still warming up. So we'll talk. Um, some other things you should keep in mind, and this is not in your handout, uh, and that is scanning color, e even if it's black and white, grayscale. Make your scanner scan it in color. The other thing is the magic number. Three million pixels per inch, right? No. What is it? I mentioned it earlier. 300. Exactly. So we want 300 pixels per inch minimum. You say pixels per inch. What do you, you mean dots per inch? I am being specific because I know the truth. <laughs> DPI and PPI are very different, but they are used interchangeably. So it's almost become tomato, tomato. We're talking about the same thing. But I'm a, a teacher, and I want to instill good habits in my students. So I'm saying pixels per inch. And, uh, oh, geez. This is, this is, oh. <laughs> Okay, this is a V350. Uh, uh, it's a very good scanner. <laughs> I use it all the time. Um, maybe it's the Apple computer. Maybe it's the Apple computer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, am, I, am, I, am, I am going to do this. So let me take some questions. <laughs> I see lots of hands. So let's go over here, ma'am. Um, I have an oval frame. The glass is still intact, but it's off the picture. How do I make a copy or photograph of the picture and catch the detail when it's curved? You said you get somewhere people push it down. I'm not about to do that. But uh, what's the best way to take it? Yeah, so, so, the, so the, best, the best way to deal with your, uh, your curved picture behind glass, can you take it out of the glass? It's out of the glass. Oh, it's out of the glass. So then, I mean, the copy shot is a really good way to do it, but you have to do your overall, then do your close-up of the eyes, nose, and mouth, okay? And... Oh, it's very small. Yeah, it's about maybe two or, or maybe okay. two by, two by inches. Possibly two by three inches. So tell me, is um, is my password uh, uh, <laughs> Have you tried to photograph it yet? I looked at it. Well, you're going to have to counter the distortion in Photoshop. Oh, okay. Okay. And there's, there's I don't know, depending on the version you have, there's, there's, there's things called uh, edit transform, and then there's the, 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 the warp tool, uh, the warp command, um, the liquify. There's different things we, we can ap apply to it. it yeah, I, and I don't have something I could do, but that's a little bit outside this particular class. But I think maybe the the um, the one I do Saturday would be more appropriate if I have time to do a demonstration in that. So just photograph it and then not worry about the distortion until I get it. Yeah, yeah, and you, of course, since it's so small, the best thing to do is get in there. You're going to do one shot, and and maybe it's a macro setting a close-up macro setting on your, uh, your uh, camera. So, and, and also, yes. what's a raw shot? Well, raw is, is what you would say to the salesman at the camera store, I want this camera to give me raw files. It's a format. It's essentially a format, but it's not... It's like having a digital negative, so to speak. 
of your, um, your image. And it's really versatile. It's extremely versatile. I mean, you, you, I, I can't explain it right now, but it's, it's really great. Okay, we had another hand. Yes? So this is a black and white document. Why would you scan that in color? Well, I want to give photos. I'm going to be working on this in my photo editing program. Okay? So I want the photo editing program to have the most details. And if I scan in color, I will give the, doc the document will have what's called three channels of detail. Each channel contains eight bits of information. Eight times three would be 24. I would have a whole, whole 24 bits of information. If I did it in grayscale, there would be only eight bits of information, one channel. So I take eight versus 24, I can get more detail. Now, there probably isn't that much detail. There's probably no difference in detail between um, between this photocopy because <laughs> it's essentially black and white with subtle shades of gray. But I think it's a good rule to stick with. You should just do that. Then when you're in Photoshop working on it, you're done with it, you can save it as grayscale. But you want to give your photo editor all a full range of color, a full range of detail. Okay? Does that answer your question? Yeah, I just don't believe it. You don't believe it? <laughs> okay, why don't you believe it? That's right. Okay. I would like to know. Even the teacher can learn something. Okay? Yes, sir. I don't know what. Yes, yes, you in the green, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at this scanner. It's like I, I saw somewhere, I thought maybe it was in the syllabus that you were, and I had a visit last night from a professional photographer that also sells commercial printers, and I asked him why you would scan in color and then convert it to black and white. He says if you have yellow stains or any kind of stain or anything like that, if you photograph it in color and convert it to black and white, you can get the stain out of the picture where if you just do it in black and white you may not be able to remove the stain. That's exactly the what I was explaining about the three channels of detail. In fact, to add to that, you can go into one of the channels. If it was a yellow stain, you can go into the what's called blue channel. Because the, the, when you make a color image, it has red, green, blue. You could go into the blue channel, eliminate the blue channel, if you want, and it's gone. You know, that kind of thing. So uh, I think that's great. You just give yourself more options. You don't want to do that all the time, especially with something like this. Don't do it. I'm just trying to impart information. I'm trying to distill it so that everybody can come away with something. I think I figured out the problem. So, uh, we had another hand. Yes, sir, with in the front. No, I, I just wanted to add to that. Yes. If you're doing, uh, taking, editing, cropping, uh, yeah. taking background out of the picture, um, uh, changing the colors and everything, even if it's in grayscale, you're trying to match the uh, tone of the picture. If you are working from a colored print, that works. You, you can do things that you can't do with a grayscale print. Uh, yes, yes. And, 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 but I would like to add, though, that if you did scan it in grayscale and you wanted to give it a different tone, you know, like a warm tone, what they call sepia tone or something like that, you can do that, just convert it back to an RGB. But I always say just give yourself the full D. I really recommend it. You're, you got black and white photos, please scan them in color. Trust me. You know, we'll, we get into it in another class, can't do it here. But I, I can sh actually show you the difference. But in a case like this, you don't have to do that. Okay, so just in case... What makes a good scan? What is a selection? What are layers? What is resolution? What is a JPEG? What is TIFF? What is RGB? How do I crop a picture? What is a zoom tool? What is a clone stamp? What are levels? My name is Eric Basir and I have produced this unique photo restoration and retouching foundations video course to answer all these questions and more. 
In my classes and workshops, I have taught hundreds how to preserve and restore their personal photographic collections with Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Photoshop Elements. Now you can have me as your personal instructor in this 10 lesson course. After studying the videos and easy to read workbook, you'll finish with a firm foundation of how to use Adobe Photoshop or any other photo editing program confidently and correctly. My computer, my Macintosh is like going crazy on me. I'm just going to crop a small area. Typically, I would tell, I would, I would set the crop box to fit the whole document, but let's just be safe and just do a, a portion of it. Now, I'll go in my settings. My resolution is 300. Now, scale. This is something I like to uh, play with sometimes. And I like to increase the scale or the magnification a little bit. Uh, usually I go 150, but for today, I'm gonna leave it at 100. And if you go 100% at 300 pixels per inch, you're set for everything, you really are. There may be some exceptions. Now, there are adjustments I can do. I am not gonna do any of them with, uh, in the Epson. Second, I'm going to do all that in, in, in Photoshop. Now I'm going to tell it to scan and I will put, I like to put the date and today's the 9th, right? Yeah, I think it is. And I'll give it a start number of 1. It's a real nice thing about the Epson scanner is every, now every scan I do after this will have a subsequent three digit number. So the next scan I do for today will have 002. I will choose a place to save it. And uh, we'll say FGS 2011. All right. Now if I want, after the prefix, I can even add some other detail. I could put the name of the person for this death certificate, I could just call it death, whatever I want. And hit OK. It will scan it, it will save it to the hard drive. And then from there, I will open it up. Yes? You, you saved it as a TIFF, not a, not a JPEG? Well, I left out a very important part there. You know, I'm so nervous. My first national conference, and my scanner isn't working. <laughs> and I forget to tell you, OK, uh, go, go, go. I give you the keys for the car. I didn't tell you to start it. So let's take a look at that. So I hit scan. For image format, let's see if I can zoom in right there for you. TIFF. Always save as TIFF. So scan in color and save as TIFF. Not JPEG. I mean, a lot of y'all know this. You're like, this is so boring. I can't wait to write the review for this one. But um, there are people that still don't know this. So I have to tell you. Anybody know why? I say TIFF, or why do I say no JPEG, no JPEG? Yes? Every time you save it, you lose detail. Yeah. Every time you save a JPEG or resave it, you'll lose more detail because it recompresses the file. And when I say compress, it averages out the colors. And hence, it makes a smaller file. JPEG is great for the internet, for sharing things, email. But it's not an archival type of format, you know? So I really want you all, when you start scanning from now on, you do that. Now your digital cameras, like mine, mine doesn't have RAW, by the way. Uh, mine gives you JPEG, okay? Just by default, I can't get around it. I go, highest quality JPEG, that's what it gives me. But when I archive these, I archive them as JPEG, because that's what they are. But if I work on them, I open them, work on them and then resave as a TIFF, okay, if I work on them, all right? Now, if it's raw, I mean, it's just a very different situation there, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much saying, even with your documents, you should save as TIFF. And you, a lot of your PCs will tell you bitmap uh, format, that's fine, but bitmap mode is very different. Bitmap mode is actually literally black and white, like a Xerox copy. Okay, let's open this up. Any other questions? I saw another hand. Yes, sir, in the back. What about uh, PDF? 
Saving your documents as PDF. Um, I actually do that for my, my bills and documents and personal documents. Um, I like it because if you have what's called optical character reading software with that, especially like Adobe Acrobat Professional, it will actually, at least the text it can read, it will make it searchable in the document. So a PDF is really nice for your documents. But un unless you know exactly what you are doing, I recommend you first save as TIFF. And if you want to make a PDF, especially a searchable one, make it from that. Because the PDF, unless you go in and tweak the settings for optimization, it will downsize, it will downsample, it will compress the images in the document, if there are images. Or it will compress the image component of it. So I say, just do the TIFF until you experiment and learn enough about the PDF. But when it comes to your, to your regular documents, I love the PDF format. I really do. Okay. But in a case like this, we got the TIFF. So, um, now this is a pretty good document as far as pretty good quality. So some things that I would do to enhance it is I would help the contrast. So, in, uh, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. The easy beginner way is to use what's called levels. And that's, in a, that's, that's called, we're going to find it under here, image adjustment levels. All right. Now this is a black and white, very straight black and white Xerox copy. It is not uh, going to have a whole lot of detail on each of the channels. But what I like about levels is I can go through the red, the green, and the blue. Now this is a little bit of overkill for such a colorless document. But I'm going to bring these white and black triangles to the edge of this mountain. And this mountain is known in photo editing terms as a histogram. And I just bring these in right here. I don't need to bring the white one in. I don't need to, I just need to bring in the shadow. We go before, after. You can't see it on there. You can hardly see it on the screen. <laughs> but essentially, it's made it darker. It's made it more contrasty. So in that case, I want the white part of the paper to be white. So I will take this adjustment and move the white over in the RGB channel. Come on. I moved the black, sorry. Let's see if we can see a difference now. Okay, so you see how the, the text kind of, that's because I got rid of some of the, 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 the grayer tones. So I pretty much made it a real copy. I mean, now it really looks like a copy. Doesn't look like, you know, like some gray spots are in there. And some people may, like, may not like that. But it's nice because it can, it can help you read it. Now, after that, if I want, I can go in and get rid of some of these uh, scan lines or these folds in the paper. And a typical tool to use for that would be the clone stamp tool. There's also something called the healing brush. But for the clone stamp tool, we'll just wipe some of that out. We wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend getting rid of the number up here. <laughs> but I would recommend to make it neater, get rid of the, that little fold in there. Okay? Any questions about this, what I've been doing right here? Okay. So let's do this. Let's jump into another one. Now, what do you do? I, I did want to mention something about... Uh, no, let's do that with this other one. Uh, I got handwriting. That so I should do that. 
doing it. There's a the signature of the daughters on there, and I can't read who she is. Is that this? I don't know. <laughs> come, come up and uh, let's let's do that. We're talking about a signature. That was the the first one. Okay. Oh no, yeah. I don't know if it is or not. This was the one I just did. No. Okay. It's a signature of the daughter, and you can't read a solitary thing. Okay. Good. So therefore, I don't know who she is. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to do that one. Was it this one? I don't know. I can't see either. Okay. We can't see anything. No, I'm blind. We're all going blind. It's okay. All right. Well, let's do this then. Let's do this. Let me take, let me do something with this one. Okay. It's not quite the same that you're talking about, but it is a signature that we want to distinguish. Uh, any questions? Okay, we got, uh, no questions? I, I thought I saw him fly up there. Okay, all right, so let's, I'm gonna zoom down to a part where there's a signature. I was just going to ask you, there's nothing else you could do to the what you did your first example? Oh, there's a lot more. What, what did you have in mind? Well, I mean, to be able to read the writing a little better to be okay. clearer. Okay, let's do this. Let me scan this one while I go to that. And we'll save as TIFF. We're saving to the same spot. Notice it gave us a serial number of two, two. automatically. So I didn't accidentally overwrite. Okay, so talking about this, all right. Like, let's say the you know certify what's the uh, what's the death the you know to read that acute or schema due to acute nephritis or something like due that. Due to ah uh, yeah 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 okay that's a good good point. All right, so let's make we're going to do that levels. We're going to work with those levels commands again. All right. We're going to move these sliders over. We're going to see if we can stretch the range. Because it's something, something MEA due to acute. Okay, so let's move this. I'm moving the black triangle over all the way. It's definitely an R. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah, uremia. uremia. Okay, now we know the uremia part. <coughs> and then, due to acute. All right, so let's try to brighten it. Just. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Now, can we? We can probably confirm that, right? Acute nef. Yeah. And we play with these levels, you see? Now what you would do, there's a couple things you could do in this document, okay? In each picture, especially when you're working in Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, Paint Shop Pro, GIMP, um, and some of the others, I just know those actually. Go to File, File Info. And I have a whole nother workshop, but I'm not doing it here, on uh, metadata. Uh, uh, keywords description, but I want to just show you this real quickly, okay? Can't spend too much time on it. But this is where I would write in description, I would write uh, ure urema? Was uremia. Uremia. Okay, so uremia, or it's probably EA. No, IA. IA, okay. We've got some really great medical professionals here this morning. <laughs> Acute. Acute. Nef. P I. T I A. T I A. S. T I S. Okay. And now I hit OK. Now what I just typed in there was saved in the document. Yeah, I went to File, File Info. Okay. Okay. And by the way, in Adobe Acrobat Professional. It has the same thing. So if you open it up in Adobe Acrobat Professional, I'm not saying Adobe Acrobat Reader, it's very limited. I'm saying Adobe Acrobat Professional. It'll have the same thing, file, file, info. That's called metadata. And it saves it with the file. 
So that will help me to also keep track, okay? Now let's jump to this one here. We kind of dealt with this, uh, uh oh, oh, I didn't open it, okay. But here's, this is a better signature, but there's a lot of junk in there. Apply the same principle. Clean it up. So we can take the white slider to bring out the white. Now, on screen it looks okay, but on my screen I could see that the dark areas, the shadow areas are very lacking. But this is an improvement before, after. Very simple things you can do to clean up your documents after you scan them. Be careful though, because you don't want to blow out details that are necessary just to make it look good. All right. Um, any other questions, type of documents? Yes, sir, in the way in the back. Are you in a uh, scanner mode there, or are you in an Adobe mode? I am working in Adobe Photoshop right now. So what I'm showing you, you can do in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. OK? Any other questions on that? Yes, ma'am. You got to that going to image? Image? Adjustment. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, wait. What did, I'm sorry. You to make the adjustments in the right. Levels. Right. Image, sure adjustments, <laughs> or adjust, depends on which version you have, levels. Okay, thank you. Levels is a great way. That's how I teach. When I teach, I teach beginners with levels because it's so easy. But when you get up there in advance, you deal with something called curves. Um, and you get a lot more control with that. All right, now, any other questions? Okay, we just got a couple minutes left. I wanted to jump into something a little more, uh, you know what, actually, this, I gotta do this. Okay, so, newspapers. I mean, how many, how many of y'all have to scan newspapers, right? Everybody, okay. So, um, I have these houses here. And so I, you know, sometimes it's fun to look up the history of uh, houses. Even if it's not your own, it's still kind of cool to see, yeah, you know, who lived there and what did they do and whatnot. Uh, but here, I, I scanned quick a uh, uh, real estate ad. And uh, this is not an advertisement for them. I don't know who these people, Marino realtors are. Uh, but let's say I like that house. That house is, uh, this whole ad, because the house that I lived in, my grandfather lived in is on sale, for example. Now here's something where the rules are a little different. And uh, document. Why isn't it letting me put in my filter? Excuse me. Okay, so this is what I'll, I will explain it to you. I can do that. Down here, I'm, I'm doing a newspaper. There's something that says de-screening, okay? When you are scanning your newsprint, newspaper images, um, not only the images, but newsprint, especially when there's images, I want you to check de-screen. It's a filter. And what it's going to do, it's going to get rid of that moiré pattern that shows up, and I'll show you that in a second. And thank you. And we have a strange swirly pattern. Do you ever notice when you scan something that's in a magazine or a newspaper, it's, the image has these strange swirly patterns in it? Well, the de-screening filter will eliminate that. I'm going to show you what it looks like eliminated, and I, I actually can't because the stupid thing. <coughs> Why does this happen to have, you know, all the times I've done this presentation, this never happens. It has to happen today. 
But if you look at this, this is a... It's acting like it was. But there's patterns that show up. The de-screening filter will eliminate those patterns and help the picture look a little better. Now, after I apply those levels where I fix the contrast, then I can go to grayscale. I can make it grayscale. There's nothing else to do with it. Image, mode, grayscale. But I only do that if there's really nothing else to do with it, nothing else to work on it with. But if you're still not sure, leave it in, leave it in color. Um, there is one more. Any questions about this? OK. Let me jump to this gentleman. Uh, this is a really interesting um, approach. I don't know if you've ever seen naturalization. You, you've probably seen naturalization uh, papers where there's a document and then there's a photograph that's, that's glued to it, affixed to it. Um, and it's, we kind of wonder how do we, you know, make a, uh, you know, make a very good scan of it with the quality that we need. And, and here is uh, one. All right, scan. So what I do is I first scan the image, the entire image, the entire document. And then I scan just the picture. So I have the, the, the document with the picture, and then I have this, the picture separate in case I want to use the picture or want to file the picture away separately. Because usually these pictures are really nice. You could crop, also crop it out if you wanted. That's fine. But the difficult thing, the difficult thing is, you'll see when I work on the picture, or when I work on the document, the picture actually changes. I, of course, I could select the picture and reverse the selection and do all this stuff. But some of us may not know how to do selections when it comes to doing that kind of thing. So I want to show you. Okay, just five minutes left. So here. Now watch what happens. I'm going to rotate image. Uh, I'm going to be moving fast, so please pardon me. Just to get this set up. Okay, so here's my document with the picture. And the first thing I'll do is try to crop out all the meaningless stuff from the back of the scanner, that white area. And I try to make it a really nice crop. Sometimes your documents that you might scan do not have, uh, are not even the way they cut the paper or something like that. You, you might distort it back into position or just crop it and deal with the white space that's around there. No problem. Now, when I do my adjustments for her, for her papers, remember what I was telling you about red, green, and blue? Don't worry, I, this is not a mess up here. It looks like it, but it's not. Okay, and look at that. Look at that nice, rich detail in there, okay? And I've, I've also eliminated a little color cast, but look at her. You know, I've lost all the detail in her hair. Subtle gradation in her hair. So that's when I keep this one. So I crop this out. And then if I want, after I'm done with, uh, let me close this one. And uh, get this out of the way. Here she is. 
I think I uh, went ahead here. Uh, where is it? it? Disappeared. Her document disappeared. Oh, there we go. It, it happens all the time. I'm, I've confused myself thoroughly right now. But anyways, you can place the picture right in there and you got all the detail that you want. So, in this uh, train wreck of a presentation in your morning, uh, I, I, I would like to take some, some more questions. I don't want you to hold back. <laughs> yes, in the back. A group picture, of a, of a, like a family in a group picture, I scan in, I'm uh, uh, headshot like her, just with the scanner. Yeah. I scan it in at 3 to 600. I'm still getting fuzzy when it comes off. We have to change the resolution. Okay, so you're scanning this image, you're, you're maxing out, you're doing high resolution, and it still looks fuzzy, it still looks out of focus. Let me ask you, is the original out of focus? Is the original soft? So the original sharper than the scan? Is that right? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if you have one of those de-screening filters on. Uh, no. What kind of scanner do you have? Yeah. No. You shouldn't be having this problem. I'm wondering if you got it. Do you have that computer with you? That lap, the laptop or anything? I'd have to see it. Do you have the scan with you? No? Where do you live? <laughs> what city? Okay, so you, you, have to, you have to call me or email me or something, okay? Yes, sir. So, you were making these changes by going to levels and yep. moving the little triangles. And yeah. you were doing, doing it um, sort of methodically, mechanically. What's the matter with just uh, looking at the image and moving those to where, in your eyes, it looks good? What's what, you know why why be methodical uh, is the question and if it just looks good, well if that I can't argue with you if it looks good to you the way just going about it without being methodical I can't really argue with you but sometimes what you see now as far as detail you may not you may not see it all. Now, you, 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 you could be fatigued, you could, you know? A lot of pictures I get from people are, they're washed out. They're, there's not, it's not vivid, it's oh, yeah. not contrasting. Yeah, washed out pictures, yeah. And that's next, that's tomorrow's class. Oh. You gonna come to tomorrow's? I promise oh, not yeah. to uh, have any more disasters, I hope. I can't promise that. But, but bring, if, if you have any of those washed out pictures with you, bring it. It's pretty simple. You apply the same principle. A scanning photo of uh, ten types. Uh, scan. Yeah. Actually taking a photo with the digital camera is better than scanning because of the glare issue. Yeah, yeah. See, see. I understand yeah. where you're coming from. And in color too. And there's some black and white prints that are better when you do a copy shot because the silver is coming up through the emulsion and it's reflecting the scanner. Yes, sir. In the back, green. And that'll be it. If you have any more questions, just come on up and talk to me personally. Yes? What are your criteria for choosing a good camera? My criteria for choosing a good camera right now, right now, if I had to choose a camera, a new camera, I would say it's got to be able to give me raw, raw, R-A-W.